That's all I wanted out of life. Okay. Um, so, actually streaming Dragon Quest Heroes is sort of dull, uh, because after a while you aren't actually doing anything interesting in a stage. Um, so I thought this would be a good time to show people the move sets for different characters. Um, it's a good excuse to stream. It's kind of a low intensity stream because I'm not gonna go anywhere where the enemies are like a bajillion to a place. Um, and now I think I have everyone unlocked except for, spoiler alert, Sorrow from Dragon Quest IV, but he's like a super hard, uh, a super hard optional boss that you have to finish before, um, before you can recruit him. And I kind of can't beat him yet. So, um, instead, I'm going to show you everyone else that I have unlocked so far, except for, um, uh, no, I'll do Isla and Doric, because I don't think when I actually streamed this before and recruited them, you got to see a lot of them. I'm also not going to do Aurora and Luceus, because, um, you can't get rid of them, or at least you can't get rid of whichever one you picked at the very beginning. So, in any event, this is Terry. Terry is from Dragon Quest VI, I think. Moveset-wise, he's pretty much the same as Aurora and Luceus, but, um, Aurora is ice, Luceus is fire, and Terry is lightning. Um, he's a much more, uh, dual-oriented character than the other swordsmen. He really has a lot of, like, single attack power or small area attack power, and he's got good sustain, which I'll show you in a sec. But, um, so he's basically got the same four-hit combo as somebody sending me a message on Facebook! Um, he's basically got the same four-hit combo as Aurora and Luceus with the same animation. His charge attacks are pretty much the same, but if you hold down the button, he will do that hilarious thing where... Boop pop up and then I'm just gonna spin through the air like a maniac over and over again um, his charge three is actually a little different with uh, Aurora and Luceus they do kind of a knockdown like uh, they'll do a jumping slash instead he does a it's called cross current um, so he hits multiple times and uh, you can there's a skill you can get to make it do twice um, which is what I've been doing. So normally it's slash slash, but if you have the skill, you can wait. <laughs> if you have the skill, you can do it twice. So it ends up being one, two, slash, 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 slash. And then after any of his charge attacks, you can kind of hold down the button. And after he's done, he'll flip like mad. Um, his skills, his magic skills are not particularly interesting, but they're really, really functional. Um, for example, oh, I should have gone over in those boxes. Uh, for example, he um, he has Gust Slash, which is kind of a big tornado that appears in front of him. It's close range. There's a skill that ups the, um, the area of effect that makes it um, makes it a little wider, but it's not really that big a deal. He also has uh, Lightning Slash which is a big column of lightning. Um, it goes pretty far, and if you buy one of the additional skills he has, it'll go really far if you hold down the button, like a really long distance away. On the other hand, it's a really narrow column, so it doesn't hit like a whole ton of enemies. And somebody hit me with seal, so I can't show you the rest of his other skills yet. Freaking goodie bags, which they're in fact called. I was I was attacked by conference swag. Um, so he has two other attacks or spells rather, and probably the big one that everyone loves him for is Falcon Slash, which is kind of like Alina's um, it's kind of like Alina's multi hit where it makes clones of him that do that follow his attacks and do extra damage, and you can boost the amount of time that he has uh, Falcon Slash up with a skill, um, a really expensive skill, but it's pretty useful. The more that the clones are out, the more damage you do. And he also has an attack called Miracle Slash, 
where he imbues his sword, and now every time you hit somebody, you heal. Like, it's not for a lot, but it stacks up, and it um, works with the extra hits from Falcon Slash. So, yeah. That's Terry. Figure I'll show you his uh, tension stuff. Uh, so his tension super, his coup de gras, is Lightning Slash, and it's a frontal zone, but it's really, really, really long. Yeah, um, there's even a falcon sword in this game that um, Aurora can get, and only Aurora can use, that has weak attack power, but... Um, Occasionally, we'll make her create doubles, just like uh, just like Terry's Falcon Slash does. And Alina has a pretty similar skill called Divide and Conquer. Usually, the deal with the Falcon Falcon weapons is that they hit more times, but their attack power is really weak. But it usually ends up working in your benefit anyway. Um, in fact, there isn't just a Falcon Sword. Sometimes there's also Falcon Earrings, which I think are pretty funny. Like. I just like the idea of somebody who can use the um, who can use the falcon earrings just kind of like whipping their head back and forth really hard. I'm taking these people one at a time because it's well, I suppose we can do two at a time. I just kind of want them to stay out of my way when I'm not playing. Um, But I realize this is going to take forever if I have to come back here for one person at a time, every time. Um, so next up on the list is King Doric, the pro wrestling king of Arba. And Isla, the uh, inventress, who you later find out is from... Spoiler. Um, I'll let you find that out for yourself. They're the... So along with Aurora and Luceus... They're the only original made for this game playables. Everyone else is from another Dragon Quest game. Uh, Doric's deal is that he's actually pretty agile for a big bulky fighter, and because he's got such a large weapon, he has a really like wide swing range. But he also mysteriously has like one of the best magic spells that's really useful for getting rid of a horde of enemies all at once. Um, in any event, like pretty much everyone in this game, he has your basic four hit combo. Do, 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 do. Beat it. Um, he also will do that like spinning dive thing if you attack with it in the air, which I think is pretty funny. Um, kick! Like I said, Doric is a pro wrestler and it's great. Um,. Now, the thing is, in most Warriors games, Musou games, you have it so that it's attack, attack, attack with square, your light attack, and then you follow it up with triangle for charged attacks. The deal with Doric is he doesn't have particular charge attacks. His charge attack is always the same, um, but you can chain it from any hit of his four hit combo. So, two, three, spin, 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 or one, two, Spin, 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 etc., etc. And the deal is you can then combo the spin with itself for like a vaulting kick. So you could get one, two, three, spin, spin, kick. Um, and there are skills you can develop that let it you do that kick multiple times. I think like up to four. So you can do one, two, three, four. Spin, 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 kick, spin, 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 kick, spin, 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 kick. Um, and then there are two additional skills you buy that combo off of the spins. There's one where if you do it, ooh, ow, if you do it instead of the kick, he does like a vertical um, hammer, like a kind of a downward hammer blow. And then if you do it from the kick, instead he does like a wide range um, area clear. It hits like a ton of times. It's really useful for uh, really big enemies like bosses because you can just get right up in their grill and uh, just bop them one. Uh, 
there's a character later who I'll use called Nira who has a spell called Oomph that gives you extra attack power. And if you've got that running and he does that attack and he's right next to a boss that has like a really huge hitbox, you can hit him like a bajillion times. Uh, as for his skills, he has to have a weapon skill that's a pun because this is Dragon Quest. So this is Crushed Ice where he just ices up his hammer and then smacks people with it. Um, it's pretty useful, actually. A lot of his attacks hit, like, a million times, which makes him really good at building up tension, which is the the Muso gauge, unquote, of this game, the super gauge that it builds up in the pink, and then you just explode and kill people everywhere. Um, but Crushed Ice is really good for this sort of thing. It's just like, well... Just hit him a shit ton of times. And then you can do two, three, four, spin, and smack. Uh, he also has a spell that's really useful for getting rid of little guys, though, called Deliverance. Where he makes this portal that just sucks in all the little enemies, and then he just blows them away. Um, later on, there's uh, heal slimes become really common enemies, and... They're really obnoxious because they just sit there spamming heal on all of your opponents. Um, and especially, like, the big ones that are really getting in your way. Deliverance will just mow those down. Uh, because they all get sucked into the portal and then pop. Um, so it's pretty handy. It doesn't... You'll notice that it didn't suck in that golem, though. Uh, it, not, it doesn't do anything against those, like, big gigantic enemies. They're too heavy. Um, for those, instead, you have his, um, his final attack spell, which is Royal Wrath, where there's just a meteor. <laughs> I have no idea why the King of Arba just summons a meteor. I don't, I don't think there's any reasonable explanation for it, and I think trying to figure it out is just gonna hurt your head. Um, but... There you go. Because Deliverance won't catch the big guys, you can just drop a meteor on them. And then there's a skill you can do that makes those follow-up meteors fall uh, and adds to the damage. Pretty good. Pretty nice. He also has a support talent called Vimstone. I'm not going to use it because everybody's... Uh, Everybody's tension is full, but Vimstone basically gives your whole party um, a boost to their uh, to their tension gain for a while. One of these is probably going to be a trap. Nope, it's not. Uh, so let me get somebody with somewhere with enemies that I can punch in the face, and I can show you his tension stuff, and then I will move on. Also, coincidentally, if there's anyone still here, um, how is the stream quality video-wise? Like, is it okay? Uh, can you actually see things? I had a real big problem with pixelating before that I hope is relatively fixed, but you never know. Okay. So, I actually didn't really talk about tension much. Um, the benefits to it are pretty varied. You can double jump. Uh, you don't take any damage. You're immune to everything. If you're under a status effect when you pop tension, it's immediately cured. Um, and then, just to show off his uh, coup de gras. This is also like a big multi-hit thing, but it also hits just a huge radius around him. Uh, it's real good. And he's got a skill that extends tension by like a really long period. So he can really get some bench, some benefit, some benching. He can do some benching. That's a thing he does. He's the king of Arba, and he don't take no shit from nobody. Um, so that's Doric. This is Isla, who is a inventress. Uh, she invented the stone cloud, which is the castle that they just like threw up on a rock, um, and are now using as an airship. She fights with a boomerang. She's mostly a magic-oriented character, but the boomerang is pretty useful. The deal is that there's two throws. You can throw it horizontally, um, or you can throw it vertically. And if you catch it at the right time and then attack again, 
She'll throw two boomerangs at once. Um, so you have the horizontal throw, which is good for clearing out like a wide range of enemies because it hits in a really huge area around. But then you've got the vertical throw that is this like big two hitting thing right in front of you. It's better for hitting um, big enemies like bosses that have really big hitboxes. Uh, normally her boomerang, her boomerang attacks aren't that fast until you buy a skill that speeds them up. And that's why they're like ridiculously quick right now. Um, while the boomerang's in the air, you can actually tap the button to make it fly back towards you faster. You kind of don't need to do that once you've bought the speed upgrade, though, because it comes back to you so freaking fast. Uh, so that's her normal attack. She's also got like an air throw. And that cool. I don't. What is she even doing with that? Let me face the camera. Oh, it's her, like, insect sprayer slash bazooka that you'll see in a bit. Um, so she basically has just boomerang tosses and spells for her skills. Uh, one is firebird throw, where you just toss it and then it kind of flies around burning people for a while. There's no upgrades for it, really, other than one that I think just makes it last a little longer. Um, yeah, Firebird Throw isn't terribly interesting. Now, then there's Power Throw. She just throws a gigantic freaking boomerang. Um, it has three levels that you can buy up with skills, and each new level makes the boomerang bigger. Uh, by the time you get to the uber power throw, the boomerang is ridiculous. It's basically the size of that entire corridor. Um, so that's pretty fun. Also, I just got to level up, so that's pretty sweet. Uh, moving on. So there was three levels of power throw. And then she has the swoosh. Whoosh, swoosh, swoosh. I don't know. I'm gonna try it. Okay, so basically she summons tornadoes. So there's the basic tornado. And then there's three levels of this too. So that was whoosh, then swoosh is the extra level of tornado. And then for a really fun time, there's kaswoosh, which is just this gigantic tempest. Um, the cool thing you might not know about Isla, though, is that you can actually fire her other boomerang attacks into the tornado, and that will cause additional effects, which is pretty cool. Um, to give you an example, if I can get some freaking enemies to kill. Alright, so I'm going to use Swoosh. And then I'm going to fire the Firebird throw into it. And you'll notice the Tornado's light on fire. Um, so it does extra damage. In fact, it was critting, although I wasn't getting MP back for it, which is sort of strange. Um, oh, never mind. MP pickup. So if I cast that again, and then I throw Power Throw into it, it makes like these gigantic swirly green wind blades. So basically, she combos. You can use this kind of like big stationary uh, explodey spell in, in whoosh, swoosh, or kiss whoosh. Um, yes, that really is a sentence that I said as a 36 year old man. Um, you can kind of make that stationary um, or semi stationary attack that will uh, kind of stay there and slowly damage enemies, but then you can fire another attack into it. And it'll really, it'll really kind of ramp things up. <laughs> Thank you, Marilyn. Um, let's see if I can get, oh, what am I doing? Just charge myself up. Okay. Her tension attack is actually pretty great. Uh, she's just like, I brought this. It's a magical b b b bazooka. So that's a thing. <laughs> oh, I can't cast evac right now. Yes, I can. You're not my real dad. Okay, I am reassured to hear that the, vol the video quality is okay. Um, 
OBS multi-platform is, is gigantic and scary and I don't know how to use any of it. And my computer's just not that good. Like I have kind of an older CPU um, and I didn't realize how much of streaming and coding is dependent on your CPU. Um, so lesson learned, I might treat myself to a new CPU and graphics card after Christmas. So that was Doric and Isla. Ooh, how many pairs of these we got left? Okay, so why don't we show off Alina and Kirill. Can you hear that, by the way? That they really were, they were really into it for, um, voices coming out of your controller in this game. I could turn them off, but I find them oddly comforting. Like, I get a level up on someone and they just say a ridiculous nonsense statement. Um... Good times. I'm also trying to show you the different locations too. So I'm going to places where people were recruited. Recruited. I don't. I don't know what happened there. Sorry. Anyhow, I'm gonna do Kirill first because I don't like Kirill. Um, you wouldn't think it, but he's actually really like big and slow. He uh, kind of has these two alternating attack chains you can use. So basically, one is just a triple spear, just stab, stab, stabity, stabity. Uh, it's hard to see, but the third hit of that combo actually hits three times. Um, so that's one basic combo. And then he's got his spear combo, where he swings the spear, um, knocks people into the air, stabs them in the air, and then swings them away. And you can basically just chain, like Doric, you can chain his secondary combo with the spear into any part of that third hit that three hit combo that is his, his light attack uh, you can also end that chain with a light attack instead and instead of knocking people away it slams them to the ground right in front of you um, so yeah he's kind of like a big big slow spear fighter with really good defense I, I was not really expecting that because Kira was kind of a lightweight in Dragon Quest 4 um However, even if he didn't have good defense, his support spell is Kabuff, which gives everyone else uh, a big defense, a big defense power up, which is pretty pretty useful. And there's an expensive but very useful skill that um, ups the duration of it, so it lasts like a really long time. So that's Kabuff. He has Maulstrom, which is a big shockwave that moves out from his spear. Uh, it's kind of like, it's kind of like Isla's power throw and then it's got charge up. So that was Maelstrom. Then there's Super Maelstrom, which travels farther. And then there is Uber Maelstrom, which goes a really long way and hits more times. Um, he also has this weird ability to backstep in the middle of a combo. Um... So you can kind of, like, nope out of a combo really fast. Uh, most other characters can't do that. They have to wait until an attack is finished. Although I think he kind of does, too. Um, he has another attack spell called Lightning Conductor, which is just... Bam! Now there's lightning. Uh, it's pretty useful for fighting giant big mechanical enemies. There's, like, killer robots you fight later that um, you can stun them by hitting them with a lightning attack. Pretty useful. Uh... And then he has <laughs> he has two spells, um, Whack and Thwack, and they're instant kill spells. Um, whack just throws out a projectile, and it auto-targets at the nearest whatever. But you'll notice I'm casting it over and over again, and I'm missing every time. Like, oh, and now I'm sealed, so I can't do anything. That kind of blows. Um, Freaking bags. I shake my fist at you. Um, however, there is an upgrade to whack called Thwack, which only casts, which only costs a little more MP, and it fires off like a whole, like a wide range of those. Um, but you'll notice I actually tagged somebody with Thwack. Um, 
they get like a little skull on them and then they pretty much die so that's a thing uh maybe the interesting thing about it is um if you cast whack or thwack a lot and it doesn't work and you probably can't hear it kirill will actually grunt <laughs> Like, if you try the instant kill spell, like, a ton of times and it doesn't work, he'll actually go, mm, in-game. Which I think is really funny, and it's gonna get even funnier when I get his, um... And I think I showed this the second time that I streamed DQ Heroes. Um, but his coup de gras is fantastic. So, <laughs> he gets so pissed off at the instant kill spell not working that he just flips out and, like, fires off a gigantic skull of dark magic. I don't... Kirill's very strange. Um, he also has kind of a special, if you hold down, you can charge uh, kind of a dashing spear thing that hits a really long distance away um, and hits really hard, especially if you charge it all the way, although that takes two, three... That takes a really long time. But that's Kirill. Now, Kirill is the Chancellor of uh, Zamolska, which is the country that both he and Alina are from, and Alina is who I'm using right now. Uh, Alina is a fist fighter, so she attacks really fast, but she also has really close range. Um, she has more of the traditional warrior style attack where she's got one, two, three, four. Uh, one, two. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Um, but because she attacks so fast, you can really uh, chain her stuff together. And she also has a really good aerial attack that hits like a zillion times. So that's pretty cool. Um, as for her other spells, and that's kind of like, you can chain her normal, 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 but then she ends up in the air, so you can do that kick and then dive, and she has very well-connecting attacks, uh, both in her, um, in her normal, like, four-hit combo, and also, uh, just in general. Um, however, her specials are really fun, uh, especially multi-hit, which is probably the most satisfying thing in the whole game to use. Um, but her support is Roaring Tirade, which is, it just knocks people over. Uh, it's kind of like a very super powered version of, um, Beast from the Tales games. Oh yeah, she also has a skill called Divide, where if you, I think it's just kind of random, but if you do one of her charged attacks and then you hit a button, she'll temporarily split into multiple people. So it's pretty much just like Terry's, um, Falcon Slash effect. It just doesn't last very long. But it also doesn't cost anything, right? You can just kind of do it. And there's a skill you can make that um, makes it trigger pretty often. She also has kind of a... She has a dash punch that works like Kirill's... Uh, Kirill's thrust. Where if you charge it up really heavy, she can just do a lot of damage. Um... So the major shtick with Alina is that she has a skill called Divide and Conquer, which is like the Falcon Slash thing, but it lasts. There's a skill that lengthens how long it lasts, and the answer is a really long freaking time. Like, this will go on for a while. Uh, also, this is quicksand. But basically, Divide and Conquer makes it so that everything she does hits multiple times. Basically... There's like two half damage copies of everything. So she does almost double damage, I think. Um, and like I said, it, it's still going, right? This lasts a while. Uh, but the neat thing is that it chains with her other spells, like Multi Fist. So let me pop that again. Multi Fist is just her. Just going bananas. Just punch, 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 punch. Uh, so 
So that's that. And then she has, she basically has a show where you can. Um, and I can't use it again because, oh no, yes I can. I have monsters to help me get magic points back. Heal me. There we go. Um, basically the more you charge Flying Fist, the higher she goes and the stronger it hits. Um, it's actually not that practical to charge it, even against big, gigantic enemies. Uh, it's almost never worth it. But that's basically how she goes. You pop, divide and conquer. You um, just kind of dive right at enemies and just keep punching over and over and over again. Uh, until they fall over. Alina is very is very practical and kind of focused that way. It's just do do combo, do this, pop her uppercut, hit him again, dive, pop multi fists. Right, like she's just a non nonstop tirade of punching. Um, and because your stuff doesn't cost MP when you're uh, in tension, you can just kind of do nonsense like this. And then to really Street Fighter it up, her coup de gras is... A Hadoken, basically. Like a really gigantic, explosive Hadoken. So that's Alina and Carol. Uh, <laughs> I realize that this video is going to be either really helpful for people or really boring when it goes up on YouTube. Um, and I'm sorry that you're just listening to me talk and talk and talk, but I wanted to get like a reasonably long stream going so that I could see if the video quality stays consistent, etc., etc., etc. Anyhow, uh, I hope you're not bored. I hope there are still people here. Go. End of the end. Do it. All right. I'm saving the good ones for last. Uh, and what can I do for you? So, from Dragon Quest V, which was called, I think, Hand of the Heavenly Bride, we got the Heavenly Brides. Um, Bianca and Nera. Uh, they're very interesting characters. Um, Bianca is kind of like, have you ever wanted to play an FPS in a Musou game? Congratulations, now you can. Um... You'll see what I mean when we get to where we're going. Okay, so Bianca's deal is that she's an archer. She fires arrows. Lots and lots of auto-targeting arrows. Um, she also has a couple kick attacks. She can backflip or front flip. Uh, there's a skill that lets you fire off a volley after you do either of those attacks. Uh, and the arrows have pretty good range, as you can see. Um, she can also fire an arrow in the air or do a kind of dropping, falling kick. The archer with cool kick attacks is kind of a recurring anime aesthetic, but I'm I'm, I'm here for it. Um, but the cool thing is that you can buy a whole bunch of skills that charge up her arrows. She starts with just one that makes her arrows explode when they hit the target. Um, which is nice, because it kind of gives you it gives you a nice big AoE attack that you don't really have to do anything for. You can just kind of throw it out there. But you can buy up additional skills that give her more volleys. So... Red is area, uh, or no, red is explosion. Charging it up to gold makes her fire off like a big wide volley. And you can actually like sidestep while you're charging. It stops your charge, but it can keep you from getting killed. Uh, gold is a volley, but then blue is just this gigantic freaking killer arrow. <laughs> it goes a really, really, really long distance. And just blows through everything. I think it even will penetrate guard 
for enemies that are guarding. So yeah, she's, you know, she's kind of, I can fire arrows wherever I want. Um, and the charges make good extra effects. The problem is that if you get an enemy that's really close to her, that kicking stuff she's got is her only defense and it's not very good. And she just takes a lot of damage from basically everything and has no hit points. So... Not the greatest at close range combat, but really, really good at range. And she's got a really weird, but pretty diverse spell list. Um, she can fire off uh, basically an area of effect on the ground that just does constant lightning damage. And you'll notice how that robot just like freaked out when it took lightning damage, got knocked over. Um, normally when you cast it, it just pops it right in front of you. Uh, but if you hold down R1 and square, she will target it somewhere else. Uh, so that's that. Then there's Reign of Pain, which is just a... Like a heat-seeking arrow volley, which is pretty funny. Um, but like Plasma Dome, if you just kind of go, boop, fire, right? Like she just kind of fires into the crowd. But... If you hold down the button and you buy a skill, you can actually, like, move the targeting reticle around. And now, even if I turn around, the arrows all, like, fire off in the direction that they're supposed to because they were already aimed. So she basically has, like, a homing laser bow. It's pretty great. So that's Plasma Dome and Reign of Pain. Her support spell is actually sleep, and believe it or not, it works, usually. Like, it's not terribly useful because the enemies that you would really, really, really want it to work on, like these cats, it's not going to work on. Um, I might be wrong, but she'll fill, like, a huge area. Oh, no, it did work. Bananas. Uh, yeah, but it kind of... Sleep isn't broken by them being hit, so you can kind of do sleep... And then fire the homing laser bow thing into the into the ground or whatever. Do her knockdown arrow. It lasts a pretty long time. It's helpful. Um, and then finally, she has the frizz frizzle kafriz line, which uh, if you played old school Dragon More, was blaze blaze more blaze most. Um, it's basically just a fireball that hits right in front of her. That's frizz. But it actually scales up really high. Like, Frizz is a little fire. Frizzle is kind of a big fire wave in front of you. But then there's this nonsense in uh, Kafriz, which is just the sun. You basically just hurl the sun at people. Um, pretty great. But best of all... is her coup de gras. Um... Where she, uh, well, I'm just gonna do it. She calls her cat Percy, which just rampages through people. <laughs> it's, there's really no other way to put it. It just, just kind of beats people senseless. So this is Nira. Um, Nira is as close to a completely and utterly dedicated mage as you're ever going to get in this game. Um, her normal attacks are really weak and slow, but you'll notice that they restore MP. That's what that blue, um, is that blue over her head is whenever I hit somebody with her, with her normal attack. Her charge attack, on the other hand, is bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. And you kind of let them float out and they'll s hit things, but then you can detonate them, which is pretty good. Um, and I think that the bubble damage is not based on her physical attack power. It's based on her wisdom stat, um, which is really high. Her weapons all give, like, bonus wisdom in addition to her just having really high wisdom. Um, the problem is that she's not, like, she's not a very efficient fighter, right? Like, you can kind of, like, oh, look... I'm throwing out bubbles. But kind of the same as Bianca. If someone gets really close to her, she's really boned. Um, 
Although she has this, which I think is funny. Her jump attack is just like a gigantic bubble. I think that actually reflects spells, but I don't know that for sure. But I think it did blow up a bubble, actually, when it... Yeah. So you can bubble, bubble, and then blow them up with her jumping attack. Huh. I did not know that until just now, but that is pretty useful information. Um, her spells are... I'm not going to cast it because it costs a lot of MP, but her spell... Her support spell is Oomph, which ups everyone's attack power. So if you're really, really, really needing a lot of stat boosts, you take Nira and Kirill together because Kirill will use Kabuff and she'll use Oomph and you'll get the attack and, uh, attack and defense buff, which is useful. On the other hand, you're kind of really taking away a lot of potential party attack power because, like, on their own, Nira and Kirill are not particularly, like, powerhouse characters. Um, her other spells are Miracle Moon and Maelstrom, and they kind of work together. So, basically, Miracle Moon is really cheap, and you cast it, and it makes a whole bunch of, like, moon tiaras happen in a one place, uh, and it drains your MP as long as they're running. But I had 112 MP when I cast this. And it used up maybe seven, so like cost-wise, it's not a big deal. Um, Maelstrom doesn't actually do damage, as far as I know, but it does draw every, oh no, it does do damage. It draws everyone to the center so the ideal combo is that you draw them together with maelstrom and then you pop miracle moon and while they're stuck in the maelstrom um they're taking damage from the miracle moon blades because the really like the option is that you just walk out of the miracle moon um on the other hand uh she has two endless versions of these where you can just do endless miracle moon and it makes it happen and it never stops like it just keeps running as long as you have magic points um you can kind of stop it on your own by using the skill a second time it cancels it but uh you if you have a lot of magic points and time to kill you can cast an endless maelstrom and an endless and en uh miracle moon and then just kind of watch them shred enemies uh it doesn't work too well against bigger enemies but against, like, a horde of small ones, it will really, really, really mess them up. Um, which is pretty handy. And then finally, she has, um, she has the Bang, Boom, Kaboom spells, which are, uh, for lack of a better word, they're just gigantic freaking explosions. And that was Bang. And then there's Boom, which is even bigger. And then there's... Kaboom, which is kind of unrealistically huge. Um, they do good damage, and she also has a talent where you can fire off the bubbles and then use a boom spell, and they'll pop the bubbles. So it's another scenario where if you can... I'll see if I can find another crowd of lobies. Um... Yeah, here we go. Crown of enemies. I'm gonna pop her, um, I'm gonna pop tension before I do this because the infinite MP will be useful. Uh, whoa. <laughs> so basically, pop tension, make an endless maelstrom, make an endless miracle moon, throw bubbles, charge up kaboom, and set it off. Uh... So there you go. Uh, Nira is, she's a very dichotomous character. Um, like in actual physical combat, if you don't have any MP, she's just not terribly useful. But especially when she's got tension and you don't have to worry about spending your magic points, you can do that thing I just did. Like, those killer robot enemies are pretty tough customers, but she basically locked them down with Maelstrom, 
threw up Miracle Moon, threw some bubbles into the mix, and then just kablamo, right? Like, <laughs> just took them out. Uh, pretty great. I guess it's one of those one of those weird characters where you know, like any mage, if she's got the MP to spare and you can set up a good combo, right? If you can't, nah. And now for my favorites. Yangus and Jessica from Dragon Quest VIII. Um, they are good times. They're also, I think, probably two of the most effective killing characters in the entire freaking game. Like, Yangus is just an unstoppable freaking juggernaut. It's great. Uh, especially because he has such a... He has such an inoffensive and friendly personality. Like, he really bonds with Helix. Because Helix thinks he's really cool. Um, anyhow, Yangus. He's Joe Parlock's video game husband. So, the deal with Yangus is that he only has three attacks in his combo. So, left, left, left. And... Right, right, right. Basically, he will swing the axe to the left or to the right. Um, and there's three attacks in each part of that chain. The swinging them to the left continuously, left, 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 does like a big spirally AoE sort of thing. Comparatively speaking, swing to the right, swing to the right, swing to the right is very much intended to hit one person at close range. Um, and you can kind of mix them up, right? Like, if you really want to hit one target, you go swing right, swing right, swing left. So you get the two big overhand hits and then a big AoE sweep at the end. Um, on the other hand, if you want to hit a whole bunch of enemies, you can go left, left, right, and then kind of end it with one big hit at the end. And then you can mix them up in the middle. So basically, you can either swing left or swing right. Left swings tend to be AoE swings. Right swings tend to be single target swings. And then you can use them in pretty much any order. He also has a weird thing where his, uh, if you buy a skill for it, his dash turns into a shoulder tackle that actually does damage and pushes people out of the way. Um, it should be cool, but it's actually kind of annoying because, like... I don't know how to use his actual dodge now. Like, I don't know what happened to it. Um, which is not not that great. Uh, and there are his jumping attacks. So, any of you who've played Dynasty Warriors are, are looking at the, the patented shoot you, uh, fall down on your hammer, ass attack. It's a Warriors classic. Um... His skills are sort of... I love that Yangus is a thief, but he's also a tank. Like, he's a tank with a gigantic axe. Uh, you can whistle, which makes enemies pay attention to you, and then use Defending Champion, where they can't hurt you. Like, they'll just walk up and be completely unable to, to hurt you in any way. Um, it just... I think it uses up... It's like Nira's... It's like Nira's whatever. It uses up... Uh, magic points while it's active. Um, and then you can shut it off by using the spell a second time. But no, I'm wrong. It doesn't use up magic. Uh, you're just immobile. I can't do anything until I turn it off. But I mean, if you're really, really, really desperate to not get killed by something, you can have Yangus go, hey, over here, and then turn on Defending Champion, and they'll just roll at you and not do anything, and then your, enemy, your allies beat the snot out of them while they're trying to kill you. Um... So yeah, Yang is the tank. He also has um, a couple axe skills from... The later DQs called Parallax. Where he makes a big swing and then kind of does a big uh, vertical shockwave like um, Terry's Lightning Slash. Uh, but it's also, you can charge it up so... Super Parallax, and then Uber Parallax. And 
And then finally, he has uh, Helm Splitter, which is, as far as I know, the only attack that actually lowers an enemy's defense. Um, so it's pretty handy. I'm trying to get his tension up so that I can... Uh... Uses... Um... Sadly, Yangus has... He has skills to boost his tension, but it's mostly get tension more when you're taking a lot of damage, and I'm just a lot stronger than these enemies right now, so they're not really doing anything to me. Um, plus, Yangus is sort of a ridiculous tank, as said. There we go. Uh, his... Yeah. It's just a big radial tornado. You'll notice that the name of this the spell, which was in fact taken from Dragon Quest VIII, is Axes of Evil. Axes of Evil. Ah. Ah. Anyhow, that's Genghis. Um, Jessica, on the other hand, is a mage, dedicated mage character like Isla and Nira. Um, but she's a little more... She's more towards Isla. Like, her normal attacks will actually do stuff. Um, she has kind of the standard Warriors combo, where she's got one, two, three, four, and then Twin Dragon Lash. Um, one, two, three, kind of a whip thing. Uh, usually Charge 2, which is what I just did, is a launcher, but for her it's a knockdown, so that's a little different. And then kind of just whipping your whip around. Um... The deal with her attacks, though, is that she hits a really, really, really wide area. Like, just really, really, really wide. And her uh, her charge four hits not only a huge area, but also, like, just does a ridiculous number of hits. Jessica's pretty great. She's far and away my favorite character to use. Um... She's also really good for aerial enemies because her charge one will hit like chimeras that are um, flying like really high above the battlefield. It's handy that way. Two, three. Yeah, see, she just hits forever. Uh, as for spells, she has the only healing spell in the game, Hustle Dance, where she takes out slime maracas and does a dance. Uh, it doesn't heal a ton of health. Like, I had to invest 40 skill points in making it heal as much health as it does, which is a lot. But she's the only heal-the-party skill in the game. Nobody else has one. So, might as well might as well use it. Uh, as for her other spells, she has kind of a stand... Ow, damn it. Uh, she has kind of a standard make-an-area attack under you, like most people have. It's hers. It's called Whip Crackle. Like it's a big lightning elemental circle under her. Uh, on the other hand, and I'm hoping I can make this work the way that it's supposed to, um, any of you who've played Dragon Quest VIII, this version of Jessica spent a lot of her skill points in the sex appeal tree, so she has Sexy Beam. Which does damage, but it also has a chance to charm people. I don't think it's actually going to work in here, because her damage is so high she's just going to kill stuff instead. Um, and actually the charm rate is pretty low, but still, it's an attack called Sexy Beam, so how can you not love it? Uh, and then finally she knows the ice spells, Crack, Crack, crack and Crackle. Um, say that five times fast. Uh, I think Crack is just three Ice Spears. They go a pretty long way. <laughs> the Twitter-like attack. I can't. So many people were so upset about the Switch, and I don't, I don't understand. Sorry, friends, I don't understand. Um, Crack is a little different from the rest of the spells that have multiple zone, or multiple uh, power-ups, because C Crack and Crackle are pretty different from Crack. Like, Crack is just three really big ice spears. Crackle is a big ground effect. And then 
crack is a gigantic ground effect. Um, but because they're ice spells, they have the chance to freeze. So they're pretty useful that way. Uh, the, the only other people who have a chance to freeze things are Aurora and Doric, because they're the only other people with ice attacks. Um, Wow, are there really no enemies over here? Oh yeah, that's why uh, Luceus and Aurora don't have a support spell, by the way. They eventually learn Zoom, which lets you just kind of flit around to the map. Okay, so... See if I can charm someone. Nope, guess not. And her coup de gras. You brought this on yourselves. So that's really strong, but you'll notice that she had to like duck and stop for a second. I think she's the only character who has, like, recovery time on her coup de gras, which is weird. Uh, but Dragon Quest Heroes likes to really do a lot of gameplay stuff that's based on quirks of the actual Dragon Quest RPGs. And in Dragon Quest VIII, Magic Burst, as an attack, used up all of Jessica's MP. Like, it did a huge amount of damage, but it also dropped her immediately to, to zero magic points. Um... So I guess they probably put that in as like a, well, but she used up all her MP, lol. Uh, so that's a thing. And finally, last but not least. Is Maya, um, who is also from Dragon Quest IV, the designers of this game super liked Dragon Quest IV, apparently. Um, so there's a really great scene, actually, where you recruit her and she meets up with Lena and Carol and kind of can't believe that they're there and uh, all that other good stuff. But basically, Carol talks her into joining the party by implying that Doric is rich and she could basically use him as a sugar daddy. So, you know, that's a thing. Maya's a dedicated mage to, like, Nira and Isla and Jessica. Um, if you didn't play Dragon Quest IV, she was one of the offensive mages, uh, the other one being Bray, who is one of Alina's party members. Um, she can fight like Jessica, but her range is, comparatively speaking, really small, because she fights with these double fans. And she also has the standard four-hit combo, which you then can extend into different charge attacks that do stuff. Maya's shtick is that she is really good at fighting in the air. Uh, she has skills that let her use her magic spells in the air, which is not... nobody else can do that. And once she hits 100 hits um, in her combo, uh, she can float. She basically drops much slower out of a jump than other people do. So, she rewards, like, not getting hit, and then getting yourself in the air and taking care of business. Of course, the deal is, if you get hit, then your combo counter drops. Um... But as you can see, she's very acrobatic, right? Which, I guess... She's a dancer, so what would you expect, right? But her skills are also really hit hit focused. Like this is Fandango, which just it's a lot of it's a lot of fans, and that's double dragon. Uh, no, it's dancing dragons. Um, basically, those are just all about like here's a bunch of damage in an area. We. And, like I said, you can use those in the air. They don't actually change all that much when you use them in the air. Um, 
She gets a little extra distance on Dancing Dragons if you use it in the air. Uh, and then she knows the Sizz spells. Sizz, Sizzle, and Kassiz. Which, I didn't name them. Just saying. Uh, so, Sizzle is kind of a snake path along the ground. It's basically a ground-based fire spell. So there's the normal one, which is just a line of fire. The second level one, which is a snake pattern that goes back and forth. But then the third level one is twin snakes. So it's a pretty, pretty big AoE. Um, oh, damn it. And she also has, for whatever reason, um... She has an attack that uh, taunts. I'm not 100% sure why. Also, I'm getting my ass beat. Dang. She's also good for fighting aerial enemies because she can actually combo them in the air pretty well, unlike most other people. In any event, um, she has Sultry Dance. So if you've ever really wanted to bring people close to you and then get sent to sleep because everyone decided to pay attention to you, um, congratulations. I got the spell for you. Oh, man. Really? But she is fun times when she's in tension because you can just, like... You can't have your combo broken when you're in tension. Um... And then she has one of the better coup de gras. She just straight up turns into a dragon and roasts people. Uh, yeah, you'll notice I have over a hundred. I have over a hundred combos, so I can kind of float. Yeah, her fall speed drops really, really low when she's uh, when she's got over a hundred hits, and she also has a skill that makes it so that's easier to maintain your combo when you um, are over a hundred hits. So she's really about like just kind of powering through uh, enemies and not getting hit um, because it'll ruin her combo. But if you can keep her going, she's kind of a destroyer. Like, she'll do a lot, a lot of damage over a really wide area. And there you have it, friends. That's all of the people that you can play in Dragon Quest and how they play and what their skills are. Um, thanks for staying up until the wee hours of the morning with me. Uh, I appreciate it. I hope you weren't too bored out of your skull. And if you're watching this on YouTube later, I hope that this was a useful overview to the people that you can play and that join your party in Dragon Quest Heroes. So, alrighty. Thank you for joining me. As Nick would say, love and hugs.